In this video, we're going to do a rundown of what chemical reactions are, and most importantly, how do we balance chemical reactions so that they represent what actually happens in the beaker when the reactions we do in lab. To get going with this project, we'll start with a list of the learning objectives that you guys will be responsible for. Uh, first of all, we'll talk about what a chemical reaction actually is. Uh, we've all heard the term before, but I think a formal definition is important to do. Uh, writing reactions has a format that we as scientists agree upon. Uh, it's a format you should have seen in the past, but we'll take some time to review what that is. Uh, we'll talk about the law of conservation of matter yet again. This came up when we were talking about balancing nuclear reactions. Uh, since conservation of matter applies to everything in our universe, it's the same rules that applies to balancing chemical reactions. Uh, and last but not least, we'll end with an example problem to get you guys started. Uh, during class, we'll go through a lot more examples, and hopefully between that experience and the experiences you've had in prior years, uh, you should walk away with a pretty solid understanding of how to balance a chemical reaction and why it's important to do all that. So let's start then with the discussion of what a chemical reaction is. It's basically any time we have new chemical compounds formed, through the interaction of two or more original chemical compounds. A chemical reaction, we've already defined this year in different terms, it is something known as a chemical change. When we have new substances formed, which is how we define a change, and which involves bonds being broken and bonds being formed. We also talked about chemical changes as being destructive, and this is why we call them destructive, because the original chemicals we had to measure that chemical change uh, are no longer present. What a chemical reaction does for us is it shows that bonds are broken and bonds are formed during a chemical reaction. The chemicals we're referred to as our reactants, the chemicals we start the reaction with, have their bonds broken. Those atoms are separated from one another. We create new chemicals known as products, and these are where our new bonds are formed, new connections between new atoms. The whole point of a chemical reaction, just like it is with other topics we've talked about, is to gain stability. So when these new compounds form, if this reaction occurred naturally or if it occurred spontaneously on its own, the new chemical compounds are more stable than the ones from before. Uh, if you recall from our previous video when we discussed uh, bonding and why bonds occur, when atoms come in contact with new combinations that create even more stable configurations than they already have, that's when we see a chemical reaction. The last thing we'll say about what a chemical reaction is, is what we write on paper, and maybe we should add that in here. So what we write on paper is designed to represent what really happens in the beaker. And that's where we're going to get in discussions like conservation of matter to make sure that our work represents the real chemistry that's happening. So before we can go any further with discussing what a uh, chemical reaction actually is, we need to recap what the law of conservation of matter is. Again, it just governs all behavior of matter throughout the universe. Uh, and what we can say, the generic definition is right here, is that matter is never created and matter is never dirty and destroyed during any chemical or physical change. And that's true for everything in the entire universe. Uh, if you recall, in nuclear reactions, which we talked about last chapter, that meant we just conserved the number of protons and the number of neutrons. By making sure we had the same number of protons and neutrons before and after the reaction, we were ensuring that, re um, that matter was conserved. In a chemical reaction, however, we're not conserving numbers of protons and neutrons anymore. We're conserving number of atoms. So, for example, the number of carbon atoms before the reaction should be the same before should be the same as the number of carbon reactions or atoms after the actual chemical reaction to ensure that all those car reactions are accounted for. We're no longer keeping track of individual protons and neutrons. We're assuming that they're staying constant during these processes. So before we go too much further, we'll talk a little bit more about pro uh, the format of this. Uh, again, this is something you guys have seen in the past. Uh, the chemicals we start the chemical reaction with are known as a reactant. The arrow in between tells us that a reaction or a chemical change has occurred. In terms of what we've discussed now, that means chemical bonds have been broken in our reactants and new chemical bonds have been formed. And what that creates for us is the new group of chemicals that are made in the reaction uh, known as our products. In a chemical reaction, uh, unlike a uh, radiation reaction, we have a little bit of different formatting here. Uh, the capital letters here are going to be the formulas of our chemical compounds, so we'll say over here as a key, the square equals our formulas of our compounds. 
And these other terms here, these lowercase letters, which we'll circle with uh, circles here, these are known as the coefficients. So circle equals, these are our coefficients. And via the balancing process, ensuring that atoms are conserved before and after the reaction, we often have to add in these coefficients to show that not just one of chemical A reacted, but maybe two or three or four of chemical A reacted, so that the number of atoms in chemical A matches the number of atoms that show up in the product as well. Uh, and we'll talk about the process of how to go about doing that in just a few moments. Last but not least, we also tend to include state of matter information when we balance chemical reactions, and we do that by putting parentheses after the individual chemical with a letter in it, S standing for solid, L standing for liquid, G standing for gas. One that we talk about, um, uh, we use a lot, but which doesn't usually have experience with, uh, is this one aqueous, which just means dissolved in water. Since water is such a common substance on our planet and water is a common medium that we do chemical reactions in, uh, we have a whole different state to describe that. And those are known as aqueous reactions. So just to kind of drive home the point of what the chemical reaction is and the setup of the actual conservation of matter thing, what I have here is a show of an image visually showing the, the reaction process. So we have a methane molecule here, and there's one of those that reacts with two oxygen molecules. We denote that by putting the two coefficient in front of the O2. That makes one carbon dioxide. We typically leave things blank when it's one, and it creates two water molecules. The reason we know this has to be the case is because this is the only way to combine all this stuff so that the number of each atom is the same on the reactant side versus the product side. Let's do a little count here. Here's our carbon atom from the CH4, and here's that carbon atom over here in the product as um, carbon dioxide. Here are the four hydrogen atoms that were part of the methane, part of the CH4. And over here, we have the two hydrogen atoms in one a water molecule and two hydrogen atoms in the next water molecule. And then last but not least, here's our oxygen atoms. There's four of them over here, and they end up getting one, two, three, four of them over here. We came up with a system of coefficients in front of each of these formulas so that when everything was said and done, the number of each type of atom was the same on the reactant side as it was on the product side. This process is known as balancing a chemical reaction. And again, it is something I expect you guys to have a little bit of experience with. Uh, we're going to go through an example of this uh, together uh, in a moment, and then we'll do a whole bunch more of these in class so we can go from being familiar uh, to actually being capable of doing this balancing process. So that then brings us to our example, the place where we're going to end our video here. Uh, we have a reaction. Uh, it says solid magnesium metal is going to react with aqueous, dissolved in water, hydrochloric acid. That's going to create a new compound, magnesium chloride, which also stays dissolved in water. And finally, a gas will be formed, which in this case is going to be hydrogen gas. So that's the reaction itself. Our job is to come up with what these coefficients are supposed to be. How many magnesiums need to react with how many HCLs, and how many magnesium chlorides are going to be formed, and how many hydrogens are going to be formed in the process. Uh, we're going to figure out those coefficients so that, again, the total atoms on this side matches the total atoms on on the right. To do this, what I like to do is create something known as an inventory. And what we're going to do is we're going to count atoms on the left and count atoms on the right in order to figure out how to manipulate this reaction to get it to be balanced. We'll start that process by listing out the atoms available. We have magnesium atoms, hydrogen atoms, and chlorine atoms. And because of conservation of matter, we must end with magnesium atoms, hydrogen atoms, and chlorine atoms. Let's start counting. This compound has one magnesium atom in it. This compound has one hydrogen atom in it. And this compound over here has one chlorine atom in it. And that's our inventory of atoms we start with. We can do the same thing over here. We end with one magnesium atom. Uh, we end with two hydrogen atoms from here. And we end up with two chlorine atoms from right here based on the formula for H2 and the formula for MgCl2.
Our job is to figure out coefficients to place up here in the top reaction that will get these numbers to match. The best way I can recommend doing that is to pick an atom as a starting point and balance this process one atom at a time. And what will happen is, is you'll bounce back and forth and back and forth and back and forth balancing things one at a time until eventually all the atoms are balanced. So looking at our diagram here, uh, magnesium is a place we could start. However, the magnesium atoms are already balanced. Uh, instead, let's start with the next atom in the list here which is going to be hydrogen. We only have one hydrogen as a reactant, we need two. If we put this coefficient up here, a two here, that's going to double everything that occurs in this entire formula, which means we're now going to get two hydrogen atoms, which means our hydrogens are more balanced, but it's also going to double the chlorines, which means we're going to get two chlorine atoms, which means our chlorines are now balanced. By adding in just the one, two up here, uh, that's going to basically balance the entire reaction for us. And now we know that one magnesium molecule is going to react with two hydrogen chloride molecules, or hydrochloric acids, to create one molecule of magnesium chloride and one molecule of hydrogen gas. As we go on with this process, uh, these are obviously going to get more complex, so it's going to require more steps, but this is the basic idea. Adding in a coefficient up here to change the inventory count down here until eventually the inventory before matches the inventory at the end. So that's the basics of what's actually going on in this process. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of practice that needs to happen, especially with more challenging problems, but that's pretty much all we need to cover for now. Uh, at this point in the game, you should be able to describe what a chemical reaction actually is, what's happening during a chemical reaction. You should also be able to, yet again, describe conservation of matter, generally speaking, as well as how it specifically applies to balancing chemical reactions. Uh, and that's the idea of getting the inventories to match. Last but not least, you should be able to then go through the process of balancing a chemical reaction itself, being able to combine the chemicals and the reactants, figure out how many of those you need so that when we get the chemicals and the products, the counts or the amounts of atoms on both sides match one another. Again, through more practice in class and more practice available online, we can take this from a general understanding to something you guys are actually good at.